Hello YouTube, this is the second part of uh, Eddie Cotton's simulation of a simple core and core um, coil and core uh, system that we have. And in this section I'm going to talk about the exc excitation, boundaries, meshing and um, how to create a magnetic, how to plot the magnetic field um, among the axis of the core for example. So let's just start. First is excitation of the coil and uh, to do that you click on the coil, right click on that, go to the edit and uh, select um, surface and over there select section. Um, I'm going to select this section or this surface uh, Z and Y so I'm going to go Y Z okay, and then press OK. So it gives me two cross section of this coil. I'm going to go and right click on that under the edit I want to make it to be one. So I go under the edit, under the boolean, I say separate bodies, the last option here, and then I say, <clears throat> so when I do separate bodies, I keep one of them and delete the other one. So I delete this one and I separate this one. Now that I have this uh, section, I want to go to the excitation, right into the current, and I say I n, for example. Um, I put like $100, $100 amp and um, now you can have the chance to say either a stranded or solid. If you say a stranded then it means that um, eddy current cannot be uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, cannot be calculated there because uh, for the stranded surface you don't have that much of a skin effect to start with but if you say solid then yes you can have some amount of um, you know skin effect and therefore you get some um, eddy current effect so we will go with the solid for this um, work and that concludes our um, basically uh, excitation now one other thing that you want to make sure that you're doing it is uh, under the Maxwell 3D you want to go to um, if I remember correctly, um, excitation. So under the Max Maxwell 3D, you want to go to excitation, and you want to go to, um, um, I guess. Oh shit! I forgot to tell you first. Solution type. Make sure that it's on eddy current. Done. And that doesn't change anything. Uh, everything should be fine. Even our excitation is still okay. Um, then you go to the um, excitation one more time, and this time you should be able to see set eddy current effect. And uh, for the coil, for the core, we may or may not have the eddy current. Depends. Um, if you want to add the eddy current in the coil, uh, it's an iron uh, core, so you wouldn't have much of an eddy current effect but uh, still you should be able to have some current uh, going inside the, the core and you can calculate that but if you say no then you can have a faster result and the coil would have any kind of effect so that will work and I press OK on that um, also I want to make sure that my meshing is pretty good um, so I'm gonna go select the coil and I'll right click on that and um, on the meshing I want to make sure that uh, my mesh uh, for that on the side is going to be length based. So I will call it coil mesh or just mesh. And then um, you can go with like number of maximum element that you can allow. Um, for my case, I'm going to make sure that it's not more than 5,000 elements. Um, same thing for the core, you can do the same thing. I'm going to call it core mesh here and uh, make sure that the numbers are about 5,000. Okay, so that will give an accurate core. But remember that uh, magnetostatic and eddy current will refine the meshing. And so if you don't give the initial mesh, still you might get a good result. But it might get into 
different layers of iterations and uh, it might take more longer to get to the level that level of accuracy you want so it's better to uh, give a clue to the simulator that how much accuracy you are looking for um, one last thing is the simulation you have to go and set up the simulation we call it setup one that should be fine enough um, uh, percentage error is one you can go lower percentage error it takes more time it's but it gives you a more accurate result um, but knowing the fact that eddy current uh, suffers from some level of inaccuracy anyway um, because it has some simpl simplifications and uh, assuming that everything is only um, steady state and there's no transient there so having too much accuracy in the percentage error doesn't really make sense because there are some intrinsic errors of the simulator at that um, engine so one percent should be fine enough in my opinion um, maximum number of pass of two is pretty low I would say six uh, maximum number of coverage pass to make sure that you are covered you can always say at least two passes to so if you by accident get lower than the energy um, error that you defined um, then you will see for the next pass as well to make sure that oh yeah the next pass is also following the same con convergence and therefore it's not a random convergence it's an actual convergence so you'll be happy with that and then uh, the frequency you can say whatever you want I want to go like 100 kilohertz um, for this um, exercise uh, or you can just say kilohertz and um, that and then the frequency sweep now if you want to sweep the frequency you can do the, do so and you can save all the plots for that so that that that's where you can actually um, do a sweep of frequency and depending on the materials that you define you may or may not be able to see a good result but um, that basically it and the last thing you should do is just analyzing I want to make sure that you see the same check mark that I'm seeing and make sure that design uh, setting model and all the parameters are fine okay that concludes this uh, part of tutorials I'm gonna run the simulation and come back to you with the results